Hi, Yasin. How are you? Yasin, kitty cat. Kitty, kitty, kitty cat. Oh, kitty, kitty, kitty cat. Good kitten, Internet. You better not start nomming on cords, kitty cat. Hi, how are you? Make sure I get the most beautiful kitties out right now. Plus, my ugly face. Um, so, I mentioned this a little bit yesterday. Um, kind of as a side note, and I've mentioned before that I've wanted to do a video on this. I thought I would talk about my little perspective when it comes to video game characters. So, I had a vlog earlier this year where I talked about my preferred choices in role-playing characters, where I tend to prefer the skill monkey, the type of character who can do, do a little bit of everything, um... But I had mentioned that the type of character I don't tend to play tend to be healers. Because that's what I play for video games. So I wanted to talk about my kind of personal slogan of Healer's Rock. The earliest fantasy style game that I remember playing would be the Ultima series. But I was terrible at it. The earliest fantasy style game that I remember playing and actually doing well at, that would probably be Shining Force 2. Um... In Shining Force 2, healers are ludicrously overpowered. When I first started playing, I didn't really know how to use healers properly, and as a result, healers would end up being a little bit lower than average level. Um, even as of my Nuzlocke, the one healer in my party that I have is shot up in levels and is something like two to four levels above everybody else. And frequently at end of game, which unfortunately I couldn't find footage of, I'm kind of shocked that I don't have the save around somewhere. In end of game, my healers in Shining Force 2 tend to be absurdly high levels. They're dozens of levels above everybody else, and the reason why is that they are capable of healing themselves, which cause them to gain XP, which in Shining Force 2, gaining XP on every single move is, a, even if it's not a huge amount, but a small amount of XP every move, is a surefire way of leveling up really fast. So, I started learning my healer's rock tactics from Shining Force 2, and it's kind of moved on further from there. Uh, the next game that I remember playing through a bit with healers would be Vandal Hearts, which I haven't talked about Vandal Hearts, even though my website is kind of a fan page for that once upon a time. But anyway, um, in Vandal Hearts, Vandal Hearts is very similar to Shining Force 2, in that healers are a bit overpowered. And in fact, there's an exploit in the game that requires you to use a healer. You basically have a healer constantly buff themselves while standing on a square that restores their MP. So as a result, they're you can basically infinitely level them. Although Vandal Hearts maximum level is 40, so it's not really in infinite, but... You get the idea. You can ma reach, have somebody reach max level. Then you can have somebody else use a restoration item on them. The way XP was calculated in that game, you would gain effectively all but two levels of the difference between that character and the healer that you just, uh, just restored MP or HP on. So as a result, healers were kind of the key to most infinite strategies. But even without using that exploit, healers were... Not more powerful than other magic users, unlike Shining Force 2, where they were. Um, oh, I should mention, in Shining Force 2, also, healers are one of the strongest units in the game. Um, Sarah, who is the healer that most people, if they knew about it, would promote to a Master Monk. Master Monks are healers that can punch people. And part of my whole healer's rock thing isn't a pure healer so much as a partial healer, partial somebody else. You'll see a little bit more of that when I talk about the rest of them. But anyway, um, the Vandal Hearts healers, you can have them promote to be monks rather than just pure healers. 
The advantage of Monk has is that they can punch people in the face. Again, very similar to Shining Force 2. Disadvantage is that they no longer have as good of healing. Um, in Shining Force 2, they accidentally messed up on Sarah's stats, and she has no disadvantage for being a monk. So, there's that. Next up would be Wild Arms. Um, I'm going to be talking quite a bit more about Wild Arms when I start that Let's Play series, but effectively, Wild Arms have two different healer-style characters in the game. There's the one magic user, uh, that'd be Cecilia. Cecilia is... Nice enough characters, nothing wrong with Cecilia. I quite like all three of the characters in Wild Arms 1. But I'm actually talking about Jack. Jack is the best healer in the game, by my standards, because Jack has the ability to drop MP costs on his sword art. And one of his sword skills, one of his fast draws, is a healing sword. So as a result, he is the only character in the game who can heal for 1 MP. And when you have... 80 MP. Healing for 1 MP is nothing. And since all of his sword art abilities seem to be based off of his attack stat, his healing actually works better than the mage's healing. So, I kind of consider Jack a partial healer at that point. And again, partial healers are the ones that I'm really focusing on. Uh, from there, we've got Final Fantasy VII, where everybody could be a healer. That was my first exposure to the whole everybody can heal. And you know what? I made sure everybody can heal. From having uh, <clears throat> healing materia junctioned on everybody to using summons that were healing based, using limit breaks that would heal, draining life on things. Healers, everybody became a healer, and as a result, every character was awesome. Then we have Final Fantasy Tactics, where once more, I frequently have people be a monk. Monks have the ability to have a 0 MP heal. They, they may not be as good at healing as, say, a Calculator or a Summoner or even a White Mage, but they're the most efficient healers. You can heal every turn, and it'd be perfectly fine. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, not to mention, monks frequently heal for more hit points than using those other abilities because monks are using their physical attack, if I remember correctly, for healing. Yeah, so Party of Monks in Final Fantasy Tactics was ludicrously overpowered, just because you can always heal. They can also revive people and cure status effects, and, you know, standard healer type things. From there on, it doesn't really... I don't have, like, specific games that I would talk about, because... Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics is what finished solidifying in my mind that healers are awesome. Hi, editor me from the future here. While I was editing this video, I realized that I actually forgot a game, um, Wild Arms 2. Because Wild Arms 2 also has a ludicrously awesome healer in the name of Tim. Tim Rhymeless is a summoner, basically. But he gains abilities based off of having guardians equipped. And the longer he has a guardian equipped, the more battles he's in, he will eventually learn the ability. And the ability that I want to mention is First Aid. First Aid, right, so the way Wild Arms 2's MP system works is basically you don't have MP. As long as you have enough Force Points, you can cast it for free. As long... Uh, yeah. So, as a result, First Aid costs... or not really costing points, but you have to have 15 Force Points, or 25. I can't remember off the top of my head now. Video recording has it. And it goes first... Um, it actually just has a huge bonus to initiative, and it heals the entire party in a game where your other main healer can only heal one at a time, unless you use items. So, yeah. Tim, Wild Arms 2. Awesome. And I should just constantly have healers everywhere. Oh, I forgot to even mention, because we've just been playing through it, uh, Might Magic 7, from the PC side of the fence. Might Magic 7 healing is awesome. Um... Regeneration is a great ability. Uh, you have Soul Drinker. Soul... Yeah, it's Soul Drinker, isn't it? Um, it's an area of effect life drain spell. You've got Divine Intervention, which is a full heal plus full MP restore. Yeah. <clears throat> These games kind of focused me on, if I'm playing a video game character, I pretty much always end up playing a healer. If I'm playing a D&D style character, I usually end up playing a healer. 
or D and D style video game character, I should say. The one exception being when I was playing through Baldur's Gate one and two, I definitely didn't choose that. I have a f fighter wizard, fighter mage. Uh, yeah. So editor me from the future is the one that has edited in all of these. This is the reason why this video is going to be late. Um, I actually am recording it on the correct day. Uh, just there's no way I'm going to edit it. I'm really tired right now. I need some sleep. It's pretty late. It's like 22.30 at this point, I think. Anyway, I'll go ahead and sign off. Good night, Internet. You gonna say good night as soon? I guess that's good night. You're such a handsome and cute kitty.